Cloud SQL is one of those tools which makes your life easier if you want to use a relational database, but don't want the hassle of maintaining it. Hey everyone, I'm Soham and in this video, we'll learn how to work with Cloud SQL in your Java application. We'll start by looking at how you can provision a new database instance from scratch. Next, we'll see how to add a database and run queries on it using the gcloud command line tools. Finally, we'll learn how to connect to your Cloud SQL instance from your Java application and execute queries using the JDBC library. By the end of this video, you should be able to create a Java application application that's able to use Cloud SQL as a reliable data store. Cloud SQL or Cloud SQL, however you want to pronounce it, is a managed database service that allows you to run your own instance of a relational database on the cloud. Although several popular database engines are supported, for the examples in this video, we'll be using a Postgres database instance. However, the concepts here would apply for other database types as well. You can think of an instance as a database server, which it's itself can contain several databases and tables with shared compute resources. To create a new instance, navigate to the Cloud SQL page on your Google Cloud console. Here you'll see a create instance button, which will take you through the instance creation process. In this case, we can choose the latest current version of Postgres as our database engine. Next, you'll need to configure the instance. This includes choosing the CPU, memory, and storage capacity according to your needs. You'll be able to set a password in this page as well, which we will need to connect to the database later. Since I'm only creating an instance for demonstration, I'm choosing the lowest configuration settings. So the smallest machine type, storage type, and storage capacity. You can choose a different configuration based on your application size. If we're happy with our selection, we can go ahead and create the instance. This normally takes a couple of minutes to complete. Once the instance is provisioned, we can create a new database. In this case, I want to create a database called Bird Encyclopedia. You may have noticed that there's already a database created here. This pre-created Postgres database is a default database meant for use by utilities and third-party applications. It's normally recommended to create a new database for your application. Now we need to create a table. To do this, we need to be able to execute queries on our database. And the easiest way to do that is to connect to the SQL shell on your terminal. First, we need to install the Google Cloud command line tools, which you can do by following the instructions on this page. I've added a link for this page in the description as well. Once installed, we can run gcloud auth application default login to update our authentication details by logging in with our Google account. Finally, we can run gcloud SQL connect to start an interactive SQL shell with our database. This will allow you to execute SQL statements directly on the database. Let's start by creating a table of birds, which contains the name of the bird and its description. We can also populate the birds table with some test data. Now that we have a table with some data in it, Let's see how to read and write data in our Java application. We will be using a standard Maven folder structure. If you're not familiar with this, I've added a link in the description with some more details. But for now, all you need to know is that our libraries are defined in the pom.xml file and the code is located in the source folder. First, we need to install a few libraries to make this work. We can add these libraries as dependencies to our pom.xml file. Postgres Socket Factory is a utility library that allows us to connect to a Cloud SQL database without having to deal with the security measures like IP whitelisting or SSL certificates. The Postgres driver library is required to interface with Postgres via JDBC. The Hikari library is used to create and manage connection pools and data sources for JDBC. Now we can create a new class that provides a method to create a new data source. First, we'll define our database credentials, like the instance name, username, password, and database name. These are the credentials that were created when we first provisioned the Cloud SQL instance. I'm putting the raw values here as strings, but in practice, you should use environment variables or Google Cloud Secret Manager as a more secure way for storing sensitive information, like the database password. 
password. We can then use the Hikari library to create a new configuration and set the database credentials that we defined earlier. We then initialize the connection pool using the configuration object and return it from the method. We can now write the main function that uses a data source instance to run queries. First, let's get a new data source from the method we defined before. We can run the query by getting the connection instance and creating a prepared statement. This will return a result set once the query is executed. We can print the results to the console by looping through the result set and fetching the column values. If you want to know more about connections, prepared statements and result sets, you can see my other video on the JDBC library that I've linked here. Now we can run our application using Maven, which should print out the name and description of our birds. So to sum up, we provisioned a new database instance on the Google Cloud Console, created a database by executing queries directly on the SQL shell, and were able to interact with this data from our Java application. If you want to know more about the different features available for Cloud SQL, you can see the official documentation from Google Cloud. You can also see the GitHub repository for the complete working code. I've added links for all of this in the description as well. So that about wraps it up. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.